Mark, you're chief executive of Herbert Smith Freehills. So much on your agenda at the top of the firm. And yet today we're talking about diversity and inclusion. Why is that? Uh, I guess I was convinced of the importance of diversity and inclusion just through my own experiences in working with diverse clients and diverse people. Uh, gets better outcomes and it's more fun. How does it feel to be a white male championing diversity and inclusion in a firm like this? I sometimes ask myself, am I the right person to be pushing this, this agenda? And I think the answer is why not? Anyone can do it. You just have to believe in it and put the time and effort into it. So I think it's, um, it is valid to have someone like myself involved in, an, in, a, in a strategy and an agenda item like this. Of course, that doesn't mean that others can't do a better job or an equivalent job. I'm sure that's right. But there's no reason for this space to be left to those whom it's trying to progress. So you've spoken to clients recently on this subject. What did they say? We recently spoke to about 20 clients on the whole topic of diversity and inclusion. And it was really, really interesting because what we learned were two things. The first was that they very much value having diverse teams serving them. And they like that because it gives them access to a broader range of talent. So we need to match that, otherwise our competitors will. And the second thing they told us was that it's important to them and that in a relationship of trust and confidence, they would expect us to be committing to this area as well. This is a great area to collaborate with clients. And the reason for that is that the agendas are broadly overlapping. And there are great ways to collaborate in terms of the clients coming into our offices, talking about their own experiences, be they professional or personal. And it's great to have those sorts of legends and that sort of witness given to our people. Uh, but there's also formal bodies where we collaborate with clients, things like the 30% Club in various uh, cities and things like the Male Champions of Change, those sorts of organisations where we can stand shoulder to shoulder with clients to, to push this agenda. Who is learning from who, do you think, there in the area of diversity and inclusion? In diversity and inclusion, we do learn from our clients. I can think of two examples where uh, a bank, an investment bank, a US investment bank, a very kind of masculine kind of... Um, meat-eating environment is very, very good, pushes us very, very hard on things like flexible working, work allocation, all those things which enable a more diverse uh, work environment. So that's been good. I can think of a construction company that came in and said, you didn't look like us when you came in to do the pitch. You know, we don't want a particular type, you know, people like me, white, middle-aged males. We actually want some different people. And hearing that back is very, very confronting and very powerful. Tell me about recruitment, Mark. How do you make sure that you're accessible to, to the widest possible group of people? Yeah, we try and go the extra mile to both recruit a diverse range of people into the organisation and, importantly, to keep them. So within our diversity and inclusion program, we think of diversity in all its guises. Now, we can't do everything all the time, so we've had a primary focus on gender, multiculturalism and LGBT. So we have a big focus around making sure uh, we don't bring our biases into that selection process. We have to constantly challenge ourselves that we're not doing that. Uh, one little thing that I'm doing is, is I'm interviewing a whole range of female uh, associates around the globe who've elected to stay with us. A lot of those very talented women, women have options. They have choices about where they want to work. And I think the, we've missed a trick in terms of always wanting to work out why people left, whereas in fact sometimes it's more important to work out why talent stays. HSF is a very international firm. We're across many, many different places in the world and in fact then we're across even more places where we work. And that's a challenge for diversity. Uh, there is no one size fits all. Down the line, what does success look like? When can this issue really drop off the agenda? So for me, ultimate success is actually where we're just constantly improving how we're going in this area. Um, it's not reaching 30% women partners in the partnership. It's actually having a level playing field. It's knowing that we're attractive to female candidates in all the markets that we, we operate in. So ultimate success, success is really around a culture that embraces diversity and inclusion and embraces trying to constantly improve it. Is it fair to say the firm has been on a journey in this area? The firm has definitely been on a journey around the whole diversity and inclusion agenda. And it's been interesting to watch it as it, it's unfolded. It's very much come together in recent years. Different elements have been important in different parts of the firm. Uh, the interesting thing about a journey is, is you're always better today than you were yesterday, but not as good as you want to be tomorrow. And so that's our challenge, is always to find out how we can do things better than we've done them before. Mark, thank you for your time today.